Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another The Geek Authority Show. I'm Lorenzo Marchese, your host. And as you know, I like to interview all kinds of people, actors, cosplayers, conventioneers, uh, vendors, people that go all out when it comes to uh, collecting and uh, all kinds of sci-fi, fantasy kinds of uh, things that are out there. Uh, during the pandemic, our conventions have been pretty much shut down. But uh, thanks to things like Zoom and, and uh, the internet, we are still keeping in touch and doing all kinds of fun things. And today, I have a special guest, Andrew Elkins. He has a company called Geek Regeneration, as well as uh, I knew him as a cosplayer. Um, he's very popularly known as uh, the Fourth Doctor. And today, we're talking to him uh, about him and his cosplaying and adventures. So welcome, Andrew. Thank you so oh. much. Thank you, Lorenzo. It's really great to be here and, and to be seen. Oh, okay. Um, yes, uh, let's, let's start with the fact that um, when did you start the cosplaying aspect? Because I know the, the Geek Regeneration came a little after that. But yes, your, that's true. What, well, I mean, I officially probably started cosplaying in about, I would say about 2012. Um, prior to that, uh, I had gotten some free comps to go to San Diego Comic-Con. And so I went as a fan of, of all genres um, and, uh, and went there and just saw a ton of people in costume. I was wearing my, my Spider-Man uh, like bowling jersey type shirt um, and went, you know, it was pretty normal looking for everybody at, at, uh, at Comic-Con, but saw all these great costumes. And I swore to myself, you know what? Next year when I come to Comic-Con, if I come to Comic-Con, I really just want to come as my favorite character. I'm like, I didn't even care about cosplaying. I said, I just want to dress up as my favorite character and be at Comic-Con. So uh, I, I have a lot of friends who, who help design costumes. And so I uh, met one of them and said, hey, I'm interested in being the fourth doctor. You think you can help me put together an outfit? And so, yeah, they put together my, my fourth doctor, Tom Baker outfit. Uh, I had the scarf that was knitted by my grandmother from when I was a kid. Uh, and I went out to San Diego Comic-Con and I was blown away by how uh, just excited people were about my fourth Doctor cosplay. And that inspired me to really get into cosplay. I mean, I've been doing costuming since like the 80s. So, so you went as, you were going as Spider-Man, as you said? Oh, I just wore a Spider-Man uh, shirt. Oh, just, deep. Had, just had Spider-Man on it. And then, I was just there as, as, as a fan. You come back the following year as the fourth Doctor. Correct. Okay, and where do you see his fourth doctor? Oh my God, uh, I, I we, we'll, we'll show you pictures and all that. But um, I tell you, I, so for those who don't know, those three people, uh, Comic Con <laughs> is probably the, the mecca of of cosplayer. Uh, you know where they all intervene in San Diego, California. Um, it's the big media rush. It's the comic books. It's got the vendors and all that. But it, it is literally the place where you can see. Would you say hundreds of people, thousands of people dressing up? Thousands of people in costume for certain. Yeah, um, and it's not, it's not uncommon to see like nine Wonder Women and, and, you know, all 12 doctors of some form, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, since I've been going to Comic-Con, I mean, we've, you know, I've been obviously part of, of a lot of Doctor Who groups where we've done ev uh, photo shoots of all of the doctors. So it's, oh, it's been, a, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. Let me tell you. I mean, now, it's hard. Now, to... Do you do only the fourth or do you do other doctors? Actually, no, I've done the third doctor. I've done Pertwee. Um, and uh, from his uh, Time Warrior episode, so it's the green velvet coat, um, you know, frilly shirt, bow tie. Um, yeah, I, I have a pseudo Tenth Doctor cosplay, but it's not. It's like it's more of a I would call it a Tenth Doctor bounding because I just have a suit that kind of looks like his. Okay. And so at one point in time, I cut my hair to look like David Tennant, and so I would put on that suit, and I'm like, oh, I, yeah. I kind of look like David Tennant, but it's not really a David Tennant cosplay. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, as soon as I started cosplaying, I got really excited. And people got really excited about my fourth Doctor cosplay. My bucket list is to actually have a cosplay of each Doctor by the end. That's oh, my where bucket. are you? Are you just three now? Or? Um, I, I, would, I would say officially I'm, I'm two, although I have uh, two different fourth Doctor cosplays. Now, does that include Jody? That includes Jody. I'll do. I, I mean, I'll do a cross play of Jody. I, I don't think. I don't think I'll do. I'll, I don't think I'll put on the wig and whatnot. Well, maybe I will. Who knows? <laughs> it's. I think it's a great costume. I like. Oh no, I like it. Yeah. it but, let me tell you, some of the Doctor Who costumes for cosplays are some of the most comfortable things you can wear out there. Even uh, six. 
even six? Well, that's that might not be comfortable for the eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's still pretty comfortable. <laughs> I mean, I think fives, the cricket outfit, is 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 cool. Uh, but yeah, no, it's pretty cool. And no, I actually really like six, and I really like his obnoxious outfit. So I plan on I most likely will get the obnoxious six doctor outfit, but also I really like his blue alt costume. Yes, I, um, I do like so the I, blue one. I like the blue one too. So I'll probably do both. Wow. Wow. At some point. Well, I, I'm, um, you've been to Gallifrey One, of course, right? I've been to Gallifrey One a number of times. And there's My several... favorite con of the year. <laughs> there's several people who do particular doctors. Like there's... I forget her name. She always does the first doctor. It's brilliant the way she... Oh, looks. Valerie. Valerie Anderson. She is yeah. amazing. Uh, it does. It's every year. She's just astonishing. And she alters the, you know, the outfit, the frills and all that. And it's... Well, she's got... She, not only, she has two versions of the first doctor. She has her full male version and then she does a femme version she's got oh, both i didn't see that yeah okay we're talking a lot about doctor who but let's let's find out are you s exclusively a doctor who fan what other absolutely not <laughs> tell us tell us i love i love pretty much all science fiction so i'm a huge trekkie uh, i've been to star trek vegas a number of times still dressing up as the fourth doctor but been as a number a, a number of times i actually have a I actually everybody. Hold, hold uh, on, I, I got a surprise for everybody. Keep going. Okay, <laughs> he's got a surprise. That's great. Um, so, Star, uh, Star Trek. Um, I mean, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Firefly. I'm a big comic book fan. I, I used to have a huge comic book collection. Um, I, I just, I love really good entertainment. So, if it's really good, I, I can't help myself. And I have a huge backlog on my DVR right now of things I'm trying to watch just because there's just too much. I tell you, and this is the time of year to watch it because we've been I know. working on, on everything. So well, let's, let's, let's jump to now. Are you into the Mandalorian? Are you? Into, oh, I love the Mandalorian. It's are like, you, are you into the Orville? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not happy that Orville went to, onto Hulu because I haven't seen it since it's gone onto Hulu, but I, uh, I certainly saw the, the first, I think I saw the first two seasons, which I really loved. I'm like, this is great. It's just, you know, a little bit of next gen, but it, but it had its uh, own stuff. Wait a minute. Wait, I'm going to stop you there. I think it's more TOS than next gen. You and, do, do you? Oh yeah. I think the whole, the, 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 everything from the look to the stylization of the, of the, of the, I forget what their federation is called or whatever. Um, you know, it's, they've got it. I mean, Seth really took the original, you know, modernized pretty much everything and gave it that family guy humor. Which, uh, a little bit. Yeah. No, I, I would agree with you in part of that. I think he, it was a good mix of TOS and Next Gen because if you take the robot into consideration, it's kind of data-ish. Um, I mean, there's, I just feel like they pulled characters from both series and kind of mimicked them a little bit into this one, oh, okay. into, into Orville. I'll go with that. Um, okay. But I'm not trying to start an argument. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mandalorian, come on. Now that's, look at the writing on there. Oh, Very God. little is said, but a lot is, you know. Oh, important. it just, you know what? It was so nice to have a kind of much more slower paced Star Wars. Um, like you just absorbed everything that was going on in there. And John Favreau just did, was, um, he just did an amazing and job. Kevin. And Kevin. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It just brought, um, they just did an amazing job of just bringing that to life. And uh, it's one of my favorite Star Wars things ever. So have you done um, any Trek cosplay or any, um, well, it's a little early to do Mandalorian, isn't it? No, I know a ton of people who are doing Mando cosplays. Tons really? of Mando cosplays. The full I don't have any Mandalorian cosplays um, as of as of yet. Um, but there's, they loved it. Hey, there's, oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, are we having a battle of Baby Yoda? No, you're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna win. <laughs> um, okay. so, so, uh, so, in terms of in terms of all the cosplay that you do. Uh, tell for those who don't know what it is. Basically, it's 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 costume play. They trimmed it down about I don't know twenty years ago, calling it cosplay. So for you, putting putting something together. So the first time, let's say you're fourth doctor. What what did you you said you called your friends and all that? But what did you put into it? Did you, you have like nineteen hundred pictures? Did you did you you know how do you put it together? Well, I, I did I did a lot of research um, with images of, of Tom Baker portraying the Fourth Doctor, and I, you know he's he was on the air for seven years. So then I had to narrow down which actual costume I wanted to do from which season. So uh, my first costume for the Fourth Doctor I did was season thirteen. 
That's the one with the brown coat, the, the really, you know, um, herringbone uh, waistcoat, um, you know, the nice big hat, scarf, you know, typic, almost typical Tom Baker, fourth doctor. Um, so I looked at a lot of images and I met with my, um, my customer who is a huge uh, customer here in LA. His name is Jeffrey Schoenberg. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's really in the theater world here in, in, in LA. And uh, so I met with him and I, I showed him all these pictures and we tried to determine um, the best fabrics. We went downtown um, to the fabric district and, and looked at, tried to match up some um, waistcoat colors with that. Um, and literally put together, you know, piece by piece of how we were gonna to make this costume. Uh, like I said, I had, I had used, I used my uh, grandmother's scarf um, that she admit me when I was uh, in my teens, when I was going to cons back on the East Coast. I went to a ton of creation conventions back in the day. And uh, it is, the colors are, of it are not right. I'll, I'll be honest with anybody who, who sees any of my early cosplay photos, my scarf was not dead on. Do you still have it? I still have it. I, st I, I retired it because my wife, Sasha, has, has, is a knitter. And so uh -huh. um, now that we did, we went to a whole bunch of the uh, the scarf knitting sites, found the appropriate colors, mashed up the yarns, and now I have much more screen accurate scarves. Picture perfect. Picture perfect. I actually have three different season scarves so far. Now tell everyone how long that thing is. For those who don't know about the fourth doctor, that's not a... It ranges. Each Some of the seasons he had longer scarves than others because they kept adding to the scarf or it would get damaged and they would put two scarves together. So where did it start and where did it end? In, in like, season, uh, well, the his season 18 scarf is that uh, maroon and purple one that's very different from the original one. And that thing's like 20 plus feet long. The first one was about, I think, somewhere around 12 to 14 feet. Keep in mind, the more he wore it, the more it stretched out. So, because right. um, the art- It was scarf. only one, one scarf? He didn't have backups or anything? Oh, he had, I'm sure he had tons of backups. I'm sure they knit more than one. Somebody had um, to step on it. I mean, in, in, <laughs> uh, in some of his first episodes, they even damaged the scarf, which is why they, they either added to it or re at the ends or the shot of scarf is, is an amalgamation of actual multiple scarves from different okay. seasons. So how, <clears throat> how long from deciding to do it to the finished version that I'm familiar with, was that a year process? Two years or? Did well, it come I think as soon as I finished that, that first Comic Con as, as just an attendee and fan, uh, it probably took about, I think I started to get into it about nine months before um, Comic Con, the next year Comic Con. So I would say it took me about nine months. Okay. You know, I mean, we had, to, like I said, we did a lot of research into it. Um, little did I know that there's actual website created by a, a friend of mine, Bob Mitch, that breaks down how to do all the costumes for all the doctors. And I didn't, uh, and I did not know about that when I started. What's, that would have probably made website? things of, huh? What's the website? Um, he has a live journal. Um, it's called the honorary doctor. I think it's what it's called. Okay. On live journal. Look at it. People yeah. Look people want to look at it. it. Yeah, and it yeah. gives a breakdown on the costumes for every single doctor. Wow. So if you really want to try a Doctor Who cosplay, that's the resource I send people to now to start off with, instead of doing what I did, um, which is try and figure it all out myself. Yeah, and piece it together. Which you piece it together. Pretty, pretty good job. Oh my. Oh, hello there. Are you the doctor? Why, yes I am, I am the doctor. I have heard so much about you. You're like, you're like known throughout the galaxy, throughout the universe over time and space, and, and, and you're a Time Lord. That's correct, I do get around. Wow, um, what exactly is a Time Lord? Well, a Time Lord is an inhabitant of Gallifrey. You see, we're a time-sensitive race, and so we observe moments in uh, time and space and history, but we rarely interfere. Um, oh, also, when we're injured, we can regenerate our bodies into a new form uh, that allows us to uh, to basically heal, but we do tend to keep our, our memories and sometimes our personalities. Um, yes, I've I've heard uh, I've heard uh, you're you you've had other forms. I mean, in fact, if I remember, you had like white hair, and then you kind of look like a clown and old, and it, 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 your regenerations vary, don't they? Oh, they do, they do. I've had three before the current incarnation. Wow, can you, you remember them? Oh yes, of course. Tell me a little bit about the difference between you and them. 
my first incarnation was kind of a curmudgeon old man who uh, wasn't terribly fond of, um, let's just say, uh, people boarding his TARDIS, but uh, he, he warmed up to at least Susan's teachers, at least. And, and then we had companions, and then we had, of course, the space oboe. Oh, kind of a joke there. And then, uh, and then the dandy, yes, the dandy. Mm -hmm. The dandy, okay. Oh, yes, him in his frilly shirt and his bow ties. All, all very colorful people. Very um, colorful. But, but I, I must say, you, you, you have an iconic kind of uh, image and look to yourself, because I love that scarf, and, 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 and I think, think that you're known for your scarf. Oh, yes, you could say that. And, and, and sometimes being a little bit testy. Testy. Well, you know, uh, my, uh, my, my patience might be a little thin. Really? Okay, so, so behind you, I can see the TARDIS. I know about the TARDIS. It stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. And your granddaughter, when you first started, is the one who coined that phrase. Yes. Tell me about the TARDIS. What is it? What is it? Well, it's a, it's a Gallifreyan TT capsule, which does stand also for time travel. Um, so uh, it's bigger on the inside than the outside, as people tend to say. So it's uh, dimensionally transcendental. I'm not so sure that uh, means a lot to you, but basically, what does, that mean? Term, what does it mean? It means that it's a different dimension on the inside than the outside. And of course, my TARDIS is most commonly a blue British police box, um, but normal TARDISes have a chameleon circuit so that they blend in and camouflage with the environment that they're traveling to. Mine's kind of broken. Wow. How, why did it break? Who knows? Who knows? Can't you fix it? Oh, maybe someday. I, I kind of like the way it looks. Well, it's pretty iconic. I've uh, been seen throughout the universe, and it's been hieroglyphically drawn and, and shows up in pictures all the time, and... And you do get around. I have to say that. Just a little. I, I, I do tend to get around from here to there and everywhere. Can, can you say how old you are? Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm probably about 750 years old in Earth terms, but who's counting? Okay. Um, as far as the regeneration process goes, is it something you, you plan? I mean, are you looking forward to your next regeneration? Or is it just a matter of how? When do you, tra do, do you regenerate? Well, I'm personally not necessarily looking forward to my regeneration. I kind of like um, who I am. But sometimes you get injured or you get hurt, or some time lords just plan on it. And in fact, they can decide upon what they want to look like. But not me. I, I, tend, to, um, I tend to go with the flow. Wow. Is the gender always the same? No, no, of course. Gender can change. So, wow. so can skin color, of course. Wow. The sky is the limit there, Lorenzo. The sky is the limit. I'm just stunned. Um, um, through time, I understand you've had several uh, companions. Um, and, and, and they seem to come and go with the, uh, with the regenerations. Some kind of, kind of, you know, kind of carry over. And most of the time, everyone gets new, 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 um, new, new companions, but how do you choose who you decide to travel with and, and basically explore the universe? Well, that's a very good question. Each incarnation, especially of the Doctor, of myself, does tend to take on different companions. Some do kind of linger over, like Sarah Jane, um, but, you know, I started these travels with my granddaughter, Susan, as you mentioned before, um, but we tend to keep companions around us that kind of... Um, go along with our personalities. And sometimes when we change our looks, it's kind of difficult for these companions to transition. If that makes sense. Okay, meaning the new personality, the new man in charge. New personality, new looks. Wow. Mannerisms. Okay, so, but I understand also you're very fond of Earth and Earthlings and Earth's history, past, present, and future. Where, did, why, where and why did that come about? How did that come about? Well, you know, I obviously have, have studied um, um, humans for quite some time, and they, and they have a huge capacity for greatness. Uh, there's something about their, their, their 
ability to survive and and how should i put it um you know, when they fall down, they rise back up. They have indomitable spirit, and they're explorers. And I kind of tend to uh, feel we have that in common. Ooh, that's kind of nice to hear. Cool. Um, uh, but I, there's also everybody in their lifetime has had, uh, um, I don't want to say a villain, uh, but somebody who uh, counters your good deeds, so to speak. And I understand the master has been... Uh, well, that's how I know him. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why he's got such a beef against you? Ah, the master. Well, we once went to the academy together, and you couldn't say we were friends or, or rivals. Um, and so um, one of the things that we actually have in common is we're, time, we're kind of renegades when it comes to Time Lords. We both left Gallifrey, but he was bent on domination and power, um, where I was more of an explorer and up for adventures. But, see, every time we crossed paths, I believe he was jealous because, um, let's just say, I never let him get away with what he was planning. Yeah, he pretty much wanted to destroy things and people, so... Yes, he has no there. qualms about collateral damage. Many innocent lives are lost when he and his nefarious plans are put in play. Right, and, and you too. He's targeted you several times, so... Well, of course, because wow. he's never beaten me. So, so staying on that dark subject, you've, had, you've met a few, uh, I want to call them baddies. Um, let's see, you've had the Cybermen and Daleks and, 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 oh my God, I can't even think, Megalos. Remember Megalos? Uh, There's so <laughs> many things that I've faced over the hundreds and hundreds of years I've been traveling. Tell me about them. How do you, how do you, how do you deal with, you know, whole races or one, you know, overzealous, you know, ego that wants to take over the universe? Well, the Daleks, of course, are the worst kind. They're just sent on destroying all life that doesn't match up to their own. The Cybermen aren't much better, as they want to remove all emotion and humanity from humans. So, as you can tell, this does not fare well for the universe, which is why I tend to become involved and put a stop to their plans. Otherwise, you know, there would only be probably the Daleks and the Cybermen around. Wow. What if they fought? I'm sure it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Uh, no, thank you. Um, do you have a, uh, do you find one of them more difficult than the other? More challenging to deal with? Hmm. <clears throat> That's a very good question. Hmm. I'm, it's hard for me to choose between the two. Uh, I would say that the Daleks are, are much more, excuse my language, hell-bent on, on being the supreme rulers of the galaxy and the universe. Wow. And just trying to perfect themselves. And you don't fear them for obvious reasons. Oh, no. Everybody should be afraid of them. Even me. They're heartless. All of them. Wow. Ooh. I'm glad you're here to help us and protect us. Um, so, you've had many adventures. What are, your, what are some of your favorites? Well, I do tend to like visiting Earth. And any time I get to work with UNIT, it warms my heart. My, my good friend, Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart, uh, some people refer to him as the Brigadier. I do enjoy spending time with him. And, uh, and of course, you know, making him feel small because he needs me. <laughs> I, I understand your previous personality gave him, uh, it was quite a handful uh, to oh, yes. deal with. And I've also, my incarnation, of course, has also worked with the Brigadier. Yes. But you've been, you tend to be a little nicer uh, to the Brigadier um, in terms of working with him. Well, uh, the Brigadier has been through a lot, so I shouldn't have to give him too hard of a time. Okay, how about a least favorite adventure you uh, took upon? Least favorite? Well, I'll be honest with you. Any time I have to deal with the Master is my least favorite adventure. Really? Even over Davros? Yes, even over Davros. He's maniacal, but the master, he's... If I told you that the Daleks were heartless, the master only cares about himself. His power and dominance over everyone. Wow. So cool. I mean, not yeah. that he's doing that. I don't, think he's, I don't think he's very cool. <laughs> wow. Okay, so... Um, 
Um, and this is great that you spend this time to talk with me. I wasn't expecting your, uh, your uh, what do you uh, call it? No, sometimes my TARDIS goes where it goes, and obviously we are here. Oh, would you like a Jelly Baby? I love Jelly Baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring one over? You can travel. I can't. Maybe later. Oh, cool. Um, well, listen, Doctor, I appreciate your time and, and all this information. It's, it's so exciting to, to, to hear, uh, you know, space-time adventures. And, and obviously, you've got a lot more ahead of you. So, uh, wow. Well, do you know something I don't? Um, I hope you're around to save Earth more. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan, Lorenzo. That's the who's, plan. who's your current companion? My current companion? Oh, my current companion is Leela. Ooh, and who is she? Oh, she's a savage. A savage? Oh, yes. Like, like Cavewoman? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> she's, certain, she's certainly good with a weapon, and, uh, and she gets herself in a lot of trouble, which my companions tend to do. Wow, so you end up trying to get them out of their situations, as well as solving some sort of master plan to destroy the universe. Well, usually my companions can uh, fend for themselves, especially Leela. But, uh, but yes, I, I, I do tend to have to come to their rescue here and there. Here's a question. Since you've had four regenerations, do you have a favorite companion? Well, I, I would say that each of my incarnations has their own favorite. My personal favorite is Sarah Jane Smith. She is my best friend. She is, she is awesome. She is. Smart, very smart, and strong-willed. Strong-willed, has great intuition, and, and, and fine skills, I must say. Now, there is one companion you haven't mentioned that I think a lot of us have kind of warmed up to. Um, Who would that be? Canine? Canine. Oh, he's a, he's a good dog, sometimes. <laughs> he plays chess, too. He does play chess, and he always seems to win. But he says I cheat. <laughs> Do you? I would never admit to such a thing. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Um, great. Well, listen, Doctor, I appreciate the time. This was wonderful. Your visit was, was unexpected and amazing. And, 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 and like I said, thank you for all the good deeds you do throughout the universe and space. Um, and say hello to K9 and, and Leela. And uh, uh, love the TARDIS, by the way. Love the, the traditional... You call it a desktop, right? Oh, well, I haven't referred to it as a desktop, but you could put it that way. Yeah, because you can change it, right? You can... Right. Yeah, I could change it up like this. Wow. That's awful white. Yes, let's, let's stick with this, then. Yeah, I, I think that has more character and, and design and style. Although, the controls look very um, antique-ish. Let's just say they're, they're user-friendly. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, again, thank you so much. I loved having you here. I uh, hope, hope you can pop in again sometime. Um, Who knows? Who knows? Oh, I know that. I know that. But uh, thanks again, and I guess uh, we'll see you in the future. Perhaps. Well, let's see if I can get this thing to go off. <laughs> Um, now that we're on that, let me let me share something real quick. Um, bingo Bango, this is your website. That is my website. Now, when did you start? When did you come together and say, you know what? I'm going to start making original. Because uh, how do you? Okay, let's start at the beginning. You obviously you want to you know maybe start a business and you want to you know appease to the the fans of doctor who because a lot of this is doctor who we've also uh, haven't talked about firefly which is another big one with you um but w at what point did you say you know what i'm going to start doing this and then the process of what do you make to avoid you know those people with briefcases chasing uh -huh. you? yeah um so I, you know i started cosplaying and, and geek regeneration became more of a, a, a cosplay sort of thing in the beginning i you know i had a facebook page uh instagram um hey look there's my child pins there they are <laughs> there's a is that oh are those uh hogwarts uh hats? those are those, those are hogwarts versions of the message hat 
See how oh. I say it? See how I call it the message hat and not some specific character's hat? So <laughs> you can say it. You just, you know, you can't, oh, I can say it. Yeah, you can't label it. Cobb, <laughs> we, we refer to it as, as the message hat. So those actually are our uh, Harry Potter versions of, of the Jane message hat. Very cool. And you can have it Weasley-fied by having an initial on it. And, 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 and please note, everyone, that the, the baby Yoda is wearing one as well. That is correct. Well, Baby Yoda's <laughs> like wearing the Jane version. <laughs> I like that. Um, now, what's on the left here? The limited edition frame. Oh yeah. So we just we just this we just this year came out with um, uh, Doctor Who pins um, that are kind of little cutaways of each Doctor's costume, as you can see right there. So those are all um, oh. all the Doctors, including um, the Fugitive Doctor, which would be Ruth and the war doctor so those are all the doctors and just kind of a slice of each of their costumes Did and so we created a fugitive doctor well ruth from the from the recent the past series oh we refer to so her as, she's it, made the canon then she's she's canon wow she's canon i have you know she kind of falls we believe before the first doctor but uh but since she you know aired with the 13th she's right there at the end Wow. So as you can see, we've done a version of each of the doctor's costumes in a, a small enamel pin. And then Am we took I? that whole collection and created a limited edition set. Can you get them individually still? Or? You can buy them individually, yeah. Wow. Okay, I've got I to enlarge this. This is too adorable for words. <laughs> oh, my God. That, the Death Star is behind the one. Yeah, well, it's a Death Star balloon. Oh, it's a balloon. Yeah, it's oh, a Death I Star see balloon. The little, yeah, I see the little uh, wrapped around his hand, I think. Yep. Oh, cool. We thought that would be cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got the cute marks. And then for those who want to see the Harry Potter, oh, excuse me, the what do you well, call? Well, those it? are the Harry Potter message hats. Message hats. Okay. So you can get them in. You can get them in Gryffindor, um, Hufflepuff, book or movie version of Ravenclaw, and of course Slytherin. Now ex explain uh -huh. to the people you this is this is how you how do I, I don't want to say get away with I want to say this is how you can do this because you've got two franchises, you know, that have lots of briefcases. Right. <laughs> I mean, you basically mash up, up in a, a th what's the percentage? You got to be like 25% different to be not. Yeah. Well, I'm um, certainly, they don't have these hats in Harry Potter. Um, right. And there's no real pattern out there to actually make it a, a hat for, for Jane Cobb. Um, and as long as you're not really calling it a Jane Cobb hat, as you can see, we're not, um, you know, you're on, you know, you should be on the safer side. Um, it really, yeah, you have to, you have to have, you know, 25% of it be your own design. Right. To, you know, to, you know and it makes it more of an art piece than it does you know uh you know you're competing upon somebody's you know uh, merchandise so as you can see right there in the middle there we have we have um actual message hats um in all different sizes for those firefly fans that need to dress up as jane yeah and they're not uh, what do you mean they're not one size fits all uh, no, because everybody's got a different size head. So we have child sizes all the way up to gigantic head sizes. Okay, I'm trying to maneuver here. Is that it? I guess that's it. Okay, what do we yeah. have here? Well, these are our art cards. They're oh, the, yes. They're like three-dimensional. Well, they're not. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say they're three-dimensional, but they certainly are, um, you know, a representation of, you know, characters that we've done. So we've got all, we, we have card cards for all the doctors. Uh, and we start, River's got an art card now, which is great. Um, all the Firefly characters. Oh, that's cool. And we have uh, Dumbledore right now too. So, oh, and oh, and we were originally for Weeding Con, um, we have done a, a Spike and a Drusilla card too. So, wow. But of course, you know, without cons, it's really hard to get that stuff. That's Alan Tudyk's character, right? Yeah. Correct, that's Wash, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, so. Um, I think we got off track here. When did we you did get off track. So originally, um, when I got put Geek, Re Geek Regeneration together, um, it was really supposed to be about my cosplay, my fan, you know, um, my my building of my costumes, you know, props, and the, the huge toy collection that I had. I have a huge toy collection that I've been looking to get rid of. And originally, that was um, well, you know, I have to raise money for college for my new daughter, so. Not so new, she's three already. Um, so, uh, so the original intent was to maybe use that as a, as a selling platform to sell off some of the collectibles I've been gathering for the last 30 plus years. Um, but when I met my wife, who is, is a graphic designer and artist, um, 
and 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 a crafter i'm like well we should start designing some of our own stuff instead of just trying to resell stuff i already had and so that's where that that was born and we've been doing that now for a little over two years i think i'm mm -hmm. um, selling at conventions um obviously mostly right now we're just trying to sell online because there's nowhere to be no um <laughs> so we're doing we're trying to do as many promotions as we can to, to drive people we do also know that it's really hard because obviously you know economy wise people don't have any money right now and that's really tough obviously for small crafters and small businesses um so we do our best to to have come up with a, a bunch of stuff that people we think people would love and the the enamel pins though have been a real hit and i think if we had cons this year it hopefully would have like been a huge success but we'll have to wait and see what would you say is the biggest seller from your website? Um, we, the message hats, actually, we sell a ton of message hats. You mean the Harry Not the Harry, not necessarily the Harry Potter ones, but the, the Firefly message hats. Uh... Because um, one of the things that we like to do, because I'm a cosplayer, is I try and get things to be as accurate, screen accurate as possible, uh, as the best as you can do. So our colors of our yarn are a lot different than a lot of other message hats that are out there and there's your table hey there's my table as you can uh, see there's some of my toys oh uh, yeah how cool uh, along the side that we were trying to see and some of like the memorabilia you can see a little doctor who poster of the five doctors um but yeah those are those are our message hats and that's usually what we believe it or not what we sell a lot of which of course you know drive Sasha mad because she's kind of getting tired of doing the same old thing over and over again <laughs> really yeah well you know it can, for her, it kind of gets boring a little bit. She would like, you know, to look much, be much happier knitting, I think, the Harry Potter versions and putting the, the Weasley Fly letters on them because at least that's something different, um, you know. But we're coming up with other stuff, other knit items that we uh, can can do. We're coming up with some really cool, like, hat scarves that are themed towards certain characters. Like, some are going to be, like, uh, Anna and Elsa. Some will be, like, Captain America and Captain Marvel. Just, just the color wise, they'll they'll help read that way. And she's also teaching me how to knit, which I'm getting better at. So I will actually soon be knitting as well. Wow. Yeah. I mean, is it is it complicated? I mean, I've never knitted. It's not that complicated, but you have to have at least a, a you know, get pretty even with regards to your stitch, your stitching, right? Uh, or your knitting, your your stitches. Um, and I'm actually not bad. So, and I don't mind sitting there in front of the TV watching whatever it is I want to watch, sitting there knitting for hours and hours. Sounds like the perfect binge thing. Yeah, yeah. Perfect time to binge. Hey, who's the, who are those guys? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Before we, get, before we get to that, I want to finish with, um, got a little slideshow for you. That's your table, of course. Um, tell us about him. Oh, that is my Roger Delgado master from Doctor Who. So during the third Doctor Pertwee era. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a Mandarin, Mandarin suit. Um, and, uh, I think that might actually, you know, it's been a long time since I played him. I put on a little bit of weight, so I can't really get back in that uh, costume just yet, but, uh, oh. I'm on a diet. So I'm hoping to get back oh. there because I love doing that one. People don't expect me to play the, the doctor's arch enemy. What are you holding? Is that his miniature? That is his tissue compression eliminator yeah, okay. that, uh, my a friend of mine, Dave Chamberlain built. It's a, it's an actual working prop. Um, so the claw, when you, when you compress it, the claws, uh, spread out and the light comes on. Wow. All right. Who's this guy? Hey, it's Jane <laughs> Cobb. <laughs> Looks like you're armed and dangerous. I am armed and dangerous. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have Vera with me, but I, I definitely have my pistol. And uh, yeah, that's, and just, just that's the hat. You, that's your hat, right? You that is my hat. It's a whole bunch of attitude with that hat. <laughs> Where is this at, by the way? Is this WonderCon? Or? Uh, no, that's WeedonCon. WeedonCon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yee. Dr. Strange, Steve no, Ditko, Dr. Strange. The comic book, this, right? this picture was taken at, uh, at San Diego Comic-Con um, by the incredible photographer, John York. And, uh, and just with the wind whipping up there and a little bit of help from some uh, extra people, getting that cape to almost look like it's levitating is pretty awesome. Okay, is that how you did it? Yeah, there was a little, little it's, it's up by the sales pavilion. We're just outside the sales pavilion on the upper level. So the wind is, the wind is whipping through there. Oh, uh, cool. Also, we also had someone flip the coat up and get out of the picture, flip the cape up and, and get out of the picture. So that nice. Like, I love the detail. Thank you. Is that is that gloves? Is that what you wear? Yeah, I'm wearing gloves. Yeah. Okay. I'm like either that or you have your Aleppo. 
Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Well, that is uh, the brigadier, um, brigadier Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. From the original. Uh, that is taking a Gallifrey one on the uh, defender that was sitting outside, and uh, the brigadier is, uh, is an amazing costume that I was lucky lucky enough to kind of fall into. That's a story in itself. So maybe we can save that story until we're done with your slideshow because it's a great story. Okay. Um, it, it looks like a real military uniform, though. It is. That's okay. my point. Okay. <laughs> oh, who's this? Who's hey, this? that's that's Dumbledore, Headmaster Dumbledore with uh, Fox there. Oh. Um, that is that's an incredible costume uh, designed by uh, um, Chad Hatter, um, who makes an incredible, you know, Mad Hatter. Um, but uh, he's he's a great costumer in the industry and a great cosplayer. He cosplays the Sixth Doctor at Gallifrey. Um, 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 how much I love that, playing them. How hmm? much of that is you and, and, and covered up or covered up? Um, well, that's not my hair. It's not my beard. <laughs> okay, but that mustache, is that you? Nope, that mustache is also part of the beard. Wow. So Just, not, just goes so to I, show what good God, God's play can do. Look at that. Is that, is that uh, where is that again? WonderCon, Comic-Con? That one, I think that might be WonderCon. In Anaheim, okay. Yeah, in Anaheim. Ah, there he is. Hey, it's, look, it's the fourth doctor in canine. <laughs> Andrew is known for this character here. I mean, I've seen him. If you go to his Instagram, if you go to his uh, uh, other sites, you'll see him with characters from the show, um, actors that have played characters and stuff. And it's, it's amazing. Um, you'll, you'll find cosplayers uh, running after him just to take pictures with him, whatever they're wearing. So, uh, Well, the, the fourth doctor is, is my favorite cosplay. He will always be my favorite to cosplay. Um, the people who know Doctor Who and, and love the Fourth Doctor, just they, they, you know, I never thought I looked like Tom Baker when I started cosplaying, but people just would like do like, like they like, who was that? Was that Tom Baker? And I'm like, it's incredible just the the response that I get. Well, you've from got, it. I mean, with the hair and everything, you've got the big eyes that Tom has when he does. I learned, I had to learn how to do that. I did when I really? first when I first started cosplaying, I, I was just all smiles because I was just like, I was so excited. People were so excited. So I just been like, all the time, but I had, I had to learn how to do that. Yeah, the eyes. The eyes. The eyes sell it. And the, the sideburns. eyes sell it. The sideburns. Are those, the sideburns are mine. Those are mine. Okay. Um, wow. What are you holding, by the way? Oh, jelly babies. Uh, jelly babies, of course. Jelly babies. Okay. For those who Bassets. don't know. Bassets. Bassets are my favorite. I know there's other people have other favorites, but Bassets are my favorite. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I'll. I'll that's the, the that's the brand of Jelly Babies that I that I have at cons, and I always anybody anytime anybody wants one and I'm at a con, they are welcome to have a Jelly Baby for me. Okay, I'm not a stranger. I'm the doctor. Remember. And let me know. And let, let, let me uh, explain because for the again for those three people who have never heard of Doctor Who, um, it's a it's a TV show that started in 1963. It's still running today, um, and the the key factor of it was. The very first actor who had to play him fell ill. The show is at its peak popularity in 63, and they said, how are we going to do this? And um, um, what's your name? Um, um, Verity. Verity. Verity, the, a female producer. Yes, a female producer in the 60s said, you know what? Let's hire a new actor. And he's, a, he's, free, he's an alien. He regenerates, and that has carried on throughout the series. So when the contract's up or the actor's tired of the role or the producers don't like you, you can you can uh, uh, go into another actor. This is the fifth actor to play him, um, hence the. Well, if you, if you count Peter Cushing. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. Wow. Yeah, if you, it, if you yeah if you, if you count Peter Cushing, he was Tom Baker was the the fifth actor to play the Doctor. Wow. Whoa. Who do we have here? Is this Albus Dumbledore? Hello, Lorenzo. It is such a pleasure to be here today on this Muggle device that you've got going. Muggle device? Oh, you, you don't have Zoom in, at the at the uh, at Hogwarts? Well, technology isn't exactly the uh, most foremost thing here at Hogwarts. Wow. So, 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 tell us what what, what brings you what brings you out? Are you uh, uh, not in session? I, I understand you're a very busy uh, professor. Uh, well, I am a very busy professor. But um, obviously, the school year just started here at Hogwarts um, in these troubling times. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to remind everyone to be very, very safe. And how is Hogwarts handling that? Hogwarts, of course, is handling it um, 
to the, the utmost and highest um, expectation. Um, of course, we use a, well, no masks, but we have bubble head charms. Bubble head charms. How does that work? How do you well, breathe? <laughs> you cast a spell, and of course, it puts a, a bubble on your head. So that way, you're not breathing another one, other people. Is it visibly seen? Of course. Wow. Um, interesting. Um, is that something you can share with the rest of us muggles? Because <laughs> we really need it over here. <laughs> well, no, I, I really shouldn't do that because uh, we don't want to scare the muggle population. Oh, wow. So tell us, what are you teaching these days? What's your, what's your specialty? Your uh, course is... Against the dark arts. Really? I hear that's a, a challenging class. It's a very challenging class. In what ways? In what ways? Well, you know, teaching young students about the dark arts who would possibly lead them down the path of casting that types of magic instead of actually defending against it. So we have to be very careful when, when teaching it to keep a, a good eye on students and see um, how their personality responds to such types of magics. Uh, but I've heard that sometimes uh, there are professors at the school that actually don't encourage teaching this course. I mean, how is it, what's the, what's the pros and cons? I mean, teaching them about bad magic versus not teaching them about bad magic. Well, to be ignorant of, of any type of magic could put you at risk. If you were to face a dark wizard and not know what's coming, it could literally be terminal. Okay, so main, mainly it's like, it's a defense. It's used only in defense and knowledgeable magic that's, you know, you may encounter. Um, certainly, that's the way, certainly that's the way I teach it, as, as a defense and, and, and knowledge base, so that you're aware of all types of magic. How do the students react to that? Do they want to kill things and, you know, all that kind of stuff? Or are they kinda... No, no, no. For the most part, the students are very respectful. Okay. And any, understandable. Any challenges regarding, you know, problem uh, students? Well, I certainly don't want to single out any students here at Hogwarts because, you know, I, I am a fan of all of our Hogwarts students from all four houses. Really? Any, any, any particular houses stand out in the uh, dark arts? You would I've, be heard, I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors. <laughs> you would be surprised at where the, the attention to the dark arts might rear its ugly little head. And I would not be so bold as to say it would just be one house over the other. Wow. Okay, so uh, now that the school's back in session, what were you doing before? I mean, what, does, what do the professors do when they're not in session? Oh, I was on summer vacation. Oh, where does one go? Oh, I, 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 was, um, I was traveling um, to faraway lands. I, I won't discuss uh, where, and researching some of the magical type creatures that you might come across. I've heard, I've heard you're big friends with um, Newt Scamander, is that, it? Is that who it is? Yes, Newt. Newt was a great student of mine. Really? Oh, tell, tell us more. I mean, I understand he's really good with the animals, not so good with people. <laughs> that's, that, is, that is quite an accurate description. Um, he, he, is, um, he is fantastic when it comes to the knowledge of beasts and all the magical creatures. Um, his uh, social skills um, can be a bit lacking. Um, but that's only because he's passionate about what it is uh, that he loves, and that is um, all magical creatures. But he was a very good student, and and I consider him a good friend. So he he's mastered the the concept of the dark arts and defense and all that. Well, certainly he has mastered the defense of the dark arts, yes, and uh, and not one to use them, but certainly one to defend himself against such magics. Okay, he he's graduated, correct? Oh yes, he has graduated. Wow. So tell us uh, some more about your, a couple of your uh, fellow uh, uh, professors and or friends um, in the magical world. Oh, well, you know, um, you know, certainly right now, I don't want to, uh, you know, bring up too many of the professors here at Hogwarts, of course, um, but I am good friends with um, Professor McGonagall, who is just cool. starting here at Hogwarts. Just starting? Yes, just starting. I, I get the impression, I, I, I've heard about her. She's a little feisty, a little... Uh, Little uh, set in her ways kind of uh, personality. She's got a lot of fire in her belly, um, but uh, but she's steadfast and loyal and just a, a really good soul. Which house is she in? A Gryffindor. Gryffindor. And what does she teach? What's her uh, class? Transfiguration. Oh, 
Is she good at that too? She's very good at that. That could be scary, you know. Sitting next to you, your best friend, you don't even know it. <laughs> but you go, you guys know it, right? You know when there's things going on? Of course. So you can see her coming if she's a cat or a mouse or a goldfish. Right. You know, when, you're, when you're so experienced with magic, you, you, you kind of know when these things are coming, yes. So who was, who was, who was your teachers? Who was your professors you admired or, or uh, taught you what you know? Goodness. Um, there have been people at Hogwarts that, that were that were favorites of mine, but there are also people out in, I, let's put it this way. I, I study a lot of the older type of uh, magics and, and tales. Um, let's take the um, Deathly Hollows, for example. I tend to study that a little bit. Wow. Isn't that, that's, that's a horrific story, isn't it? Well, it, Three brothers. technically it's a nursery rhyme. Oh, it is. I thought it was a, a slice of history for Hogwarts well, wizards. Well, uh -oh. it, it, don't, most fairy tales do come from history, don't they? <laughs> okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the Deathly Hallows and how that came about? Well, of course, there's the Resurrection Stone, the Cloak of Invisibility, and of course, the Elder Wand. Right. I, have, I have not seen any of these things in person yet, of course. Okay. The Elder One. I've heard of the Elder One. Who has that? Does anyone know? I don't know at this time. At this time. Okay. Have you been to the future? <laughs> well, I, you know, we don't talk uh, about that. thing called a time turner <laughs> thing? Yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about time turners. That, you know, those, those could be used as, let's say, a cheat. Okay, I certainly hope none of the students get a hold of something like that. They're banned here at Hogwarts because... They're banned? Oh. They're oh. cheap. So what do you think is the greatest challenge for the, 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 uh, the magical world, the community uh, right now for you? Well, certainly um, right now the challenge for the magical world is, of course, um, keeping um, muggles and the general public that are not magical from learning too much about who we are and what we do. We do not want to scare the public. We don't want the public to fear us. We are not a threat at all. So um, obviously there's a level of secrecy that we need to adhere to. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. Um, certain muggles do know and are okay with it, but why in general does the magical community not want to be known? What, what, is, the, what is the real why? Well, it could be dangerous. I mean, you think about if the governments knew that there was a serious amount of magic going on, they could attempt to force um, wizards and, and witches to do things against the general public that would not be considered acceptable. And it's a lot of power to wield around. But having all that magic, um, I would think you'd either sense it coming or be able to control that kind of activity. But imagine all the, 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 the science and technology that could be advanced with the help of magic, or is that not part of the code or? Well, you know, some people consider science just another type of magic. Can you say where Hog Hogwarts is physically or no? Let's just say in Great Britain. <laughs> Great Britain, hundreds of thousands of square miles, but somewhere in Great Britain. Wow, do you have any ambitions? You just want to be a professor there at Hogwarts, or do you? Uh... Well, I do want to see Hogwarts become the best it can be, so I could imagine myself one day as headmaster. Ooh, who's headmaster now? Um, good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll just treat it as private information. Um, Sounds like a good idea. I've heard nothing but good things about Hogwarts, um, uh, as far as uh, its history, it's been around for in little years, so Long time, uh, yeah. I know. So, what what is uh, what is it your uh, what is your goal in terms of um, when these students? I mean, do you get to see them graduate? Do you get to see them um, pass classes, or when did you start? Is it recent? Oh no, I, I've been I've been a, a Hogwarts professor for probably a decade or so right now. Wow! So, so it's, I, I have been able to see students start at Hogwarts and graduate. And it's been quite, quite a, I take a lot of pride in the students that, that graduate, especially from the do, Defensive Against the Dark Arts classes. Wow. Especially when they score really well on their owls and newts. 
Those are tests. those are tests. Oh, tests. You call it? Oh, uh, test mistake. Yes. What do they stand for? Owls? You said? Yes. O W L's and N E W T's. Um, how um, how do you feel about the, our society today, other than the pandemic and you know, I, would you say bubble spells? Um, <laughs> Bubblehead charms. <laughs> how does the world look to you today? Well, uh, your world is a scary place right now. <laughs> let's just let's just say that. Uh, okay. I really, I truly wish that people were more accepting of others. Um, there's there's a bit too much hatred in the world right now, and that's that's unacceptable. Wow. And you don't encourage. I don't, encourage want, to I don't want to get too much into politics, though. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just curious because you, you're kind of looking at it from the outside, so to speak. Um, and we can't look back because, you know, we don't know much about wizards and witches. So, um, but this is, this is very interesting. So I just want to thank you for the, uh, popping in like this. And, and, and I had no idea. I had no idea. I, there's a, there's a, a friend of mine, um, in the, my world, uh, his name is Andrew Elkins and he's talked nothing but wonderful things about you. And I asked him, I said, can I meet you sometime? And I don't know. Did he, did he let you know I was doing this? He is, he is quite a kind fellow, and I do, do appreciate him uh, tying me in with you so we could communicate in this very strange manner. This electronic technology, you mean? Yes, like I said, this, this muggle technology of Zoom, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Uh, in, in closing, anything you want to say to uh, anybody out there? What you, uh, words, of, words of wisdom? You never know when you'll be expecting an owl saying you've been accepted to Hogwarts. Wow. Do you have, can a muggle be accepted or just wizards? Just wizards or witches. Or witches? Bummer. Unfortunately, muggles um, don't have any magical ability. So uh, unfortunately, they, they cannot learn at Hogwarts. Oh. But you're okay with muggles, right? Of course. Okay. Just checking. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Albus. Can I call you Albus? Yes, of course. Or, or Professor Dumbledore. That also works. Ooh, I feel official. Anyway, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. And uh, can, you, can you zap me back to, to Andrew? I was actually talking to him. Sure, let me get my wand out. Uh-oh. Is this going to hurt? Of course not. Back to Andrew there. <laughs>